Hello, guys. Today, I will show you how you can use a simple factory pattern in an API. Okay, so how we are going to create an API uh, with a factory pattern and uh, use interfaces and implement that interface and then get back our result. Okay. So before going ahead, uh, I would like to show you the steps involved in doing this uh, API or uh, this process. Okay, simple factory pattern in an API. The first step, we create an API using the API controller, which is inheriting from the controller class. And then we add the action methods to the API controller, or uh, you can say just the basic uh, class required for the API controller. And then we create another class library project, wherein we will have our interface and uh, the implementation. So the interfaces or the implementations you can have there. And then we will add reference to that class library. And then we will create objects of that reference or of that reference class, and then pass parameters to our interface. And that's like indirectly calling the implementation class uh, through the object. And then we receive our result. Okay, uh, let's see that in action. So friends, to save our time, I will use uh, one previously created example, but I will show you the steps. So we will be a little faster what we are doing there. Um, okay, now to create a project, we select the new project and we select the ASP.NET Core Web API. And uh, uh, we will, let me put this on my desktop so that I can put that on GitHub. Okay, now name this one as API. Okay, let's go to the next. Uh, not doing an HTTPS here. So what's the difference? Well, uh, if I set it for HTTPS, my browser is going to ask me like, do you trust this certificate? And then I say uh, yes. So anytime I run that, it will keep on trusting that HTTPS. I don't like that. So I'll just keep it simple. Now when the API is created, this is the API project. Now we need to add the controller class here. We're not making any changes in the program.cs as of now, okay? We are not using anything there. We will simply as, uh, add a controller, that's an API controller. So add a controller and select the web API, okay? API controller, I'm selecting the empty. It's asking me for a name. So let's say that's a student's controller. S see, just make sure that this is an API controller, okay? You will have these two headers, base. I don't need the base. Now I need a method. I think this one is probably JSON. Mm, no. Okay, no. When you have this, you can have action result or I action result that uh, won't make a difference. So we have to return something, okay? So if you do not return anything, then it will give you this error. So let's say for string something, and I return this A, okay? Now let's try to run this. Guys, remember this is uh, .NET 6, so it will by default use Swagger. Yeah, see, it's taking up Swagger. Error, why do we get this error? Well, because we did not mention anything in the action methods. Okay, so you have to mention what are this. First thing is you have to mention the HTTP get. The API doesn't understand what kind of uh, requests are these. That's why. API slash controller slash action. Still not. Okay. So 
you need to remember the steps, okay? Otherwise, uh, you will keep getting this error. It worked now, this time, okay? It worked this time. We don't have anything, so it will not give us a result because it will be a blank. Because JSON is returning nothing, so yeah, response body has nothing. So let's uh, move back. Stop this. Okay. Now, what we are going to do is we will have another class library. Right click on the project, add new item. Add new project, okay? Add new project, I'm sorry. You have to add new project and you select the class library. You see this one? Name the class library as something. So let's say I'll copy that from the previous one. This is BL class library. But you can say the business logic. This is the default class, okay? This is the default class. We will add folders here. One is interfaces and one is implementation. Okay, we will add interfaces in the interfaces class. Interface, add class, select interface, okay? Now you have to name this interface. For example, I will persons by default it's internal so market public and we uh, yeah we will create two declaring methods inside the interface okay these are the methods now we will have uh, implementation we will add a class what is the class name person implements Yeah, this one is going to implement the interface that we created just now. So I persons. Get first name, get last name now. Okay, so we will use this one. Okay, guys, let's um, save some more time. Let's come back to the original uh, program that I created instead of uh, doing this. I, I showed you already like what we did. Uh, to create a class library and to have an interface okay so let's move on to the project that i created and uh, move ahead from there without wasting any more time all right so what i did here is um i created the interface uh, that is i persons i persons has two methods okay you you declare methods inside the interface now anyone using this interface will have to implement these two methods and pass this parameter so our implements will uh, use the I persons and it will implement those two methods. So just to make a little change inside the interface, like how to know that interface has been called, I manipulated the string that we are receiving and added a Don boss for school to it. Uh, last name we are not using here. Uh, we will do a get increment that will be for a teacher just to perform some calculations in the backend. Okay. Now, uh, this is one implementation of one interface and we will have another interface named I hike. Just like we did so right click on the implements uh, folder add class select the interface from here name the interface as i hike and you will be done so what we are doing we will pass a decimal uh, method get increment we will accept an amount and it's returning decimal so in the implements uh, we can have multiple interfaces remember guys this uh, you can implement multi multiple interfaces okay interfaces are always implemented Okay, classes are inherited, interfaces are implemented. So this inherits, it's called implementation. So I implemented two interfaces in the same class. Now get increment has to be uh, implemented as well. So once I, uh, if I remove this one, it will ask me to will show me a squiggly error and say that it's not implemented. So you have to implement this. Now I'm returning an amount, which is integer, but we will uh, transfer it in a decimal value. So this is basically receiving an amount and adding a 10% to it and then returning that value. Okay. Now, after doing that, 
uh, you add a reference. Okay, so now we have two projects here, the BL class library and the API simple. So in the API simple, you right click on the dependencies, add project reference. It will show you the name of the project, select that project, press OK, and your class, uh, the DLL would be added inside this project. It will show you that inside the project, the class library is added, okay? So after doing this one in the controller section, you have to mention this one, the class library dot implements, not the interface, the implements folder, because the implements folder has all the, uh, it, it has the, oh, I made one mistake. I hike should have been inside the interface. All the interfaces should be in one place. Let me see if there is any build error. Yeah, there is no build errors because we already uh, inherited uh, that interface here. So it should be good. Okay. So the interfaces are in one place, say inside the interface folder and uh, implements will have the class file that is implementing it. Okay. So they are separately uh, kept in two different folders. Okay. Now we are calling the implements class. Okay. We are calling this class. We will create an object of this class to access these uh, methods. So inside the person's controller, we will have all the required methods. Constructor is not required here. Okay? We are not doing any dependency injection, so we are not requiring the constructor. So get people is giving me a student. Okay, If I, I want to have more people here, I can put in teacher's name and stuff here, parent's name, and I can call them. Uh, okay, I can call them the uh, like the teachers from Don Bosco School, the students from Don Bosco School, and things like that. Okay, so uh, what we are doing, the operation that we are doing here is we are trying to increment the salary of the teacher and trying to get the uh, student's name along with the school name from the interface. Okay, so that's the thing that we are using here inside a factory pattern. Now, a simple factory. This is uh, you don't call it a pattern. This is uh, according to the Gang of Four. So this will not be a pattern. This is like uh, doing a loose coupling of your project. Okay, so. Instead of making a tight coupling, uh, having everything in one place, we make a distributed architecture. Okay? This is all distributed, decentralized. Okay? Not just one place. We uh, put them in different places. Now let's try to run this one. Okay. We got two of them. So let's say get people. We have uh, fixed this name. So. Uh, nothing much to do here. It will just simply call that uh, uh, student uh, controller and add the Don Bosco school. So see, this one is working. Student Jack Don Bosco school is working. Okay. Now let's do the other one. Uh, that's how you will understand. Like even passing a parameter works, and it goes to the uh, uh, other class library and does the calculation and returns back. So let's say the teacher's salary is five thousand, and after increment, how much is it? That will be a ten percent increase. So you can see that it's fifty five hundred. Okay. It's going to the other class library, performing the calculation there and giving me back the response. Okay, so that was all about the factory or simple factory. Uh, yeah. So instead of having everything at one place, we made an interface and we are implementing it from another class library, and performing the calculation there, uh, and uh, using the features of the interface and re response is returned back. Okay, guys, one more thing to let you know. What is an interface? So interface is basically a contract. It's a contract. Like you cannot uh, use this interface and do things on your own. Uh, this is like an agreement. So when you have a person's interface, you mean that you have to pass a first name and a last name. Okay, Not something of your choice. You implement a first name and a last name. Similarly, if you're using iHike, then you go through with this method name and you are passing an integer parameter to it. So this is like the rule of the programming. Okay. So I guess you understood what all we did here and how the calculations were performed and how the uh, string was retrieved with an additional text. Uh, yeah, we can use this one in future with the database and show you the results. All right, guys, without wasting any more of your time, uh, we come to an end. And this is a small program about a simple factory. And I hope you understood. So stay tuned, stay connected until we have our next set of videos. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.